ever experienced deliverance? Have you ever been rescued, set free, or spared from something terrible? On the 15th of September 1940, chain home radar stations around South East England, such as this one near Colchester, began picking up masses of aircraft approaching Great Britain from German-occupied France. For several weeks, Adolf Hitler and his top military commanders had sent the German Air Force to relentlessly bomb key British targets. Now, the largest attack force of the whole of the Battle of Britain was forming up over northern France. A German victory on this one day would spell defeat for the RAF and trigger Operation Sea Lion, the invasion of Great Britain. However, just 45 minutes after radar detected the aircraft, RAF fighters were in the air, ready to intercept the incoming offensive. From mid-morning to dusk that day, fierce dogfights and aerial battles raged over the fields of southern England, and the sky was filled with dark swarms of aircraft and tangled white wisps of their vapour trails. As the day wore on, the British pilots overcame incredible odds and more and more enemy aircraft were shot down. Eventually, the tide of the battle turned in favour of the RAF and the attackers were driven back. Not only was it a great victory for fighter command, but also the turning point in the Battle of Britain. As Winston Churchill famously said, never was so much owed by so many to so few. Thanks to the RAF, the British nation had been rescued from an overwhelming enemy force, set free from the threat of invasion, and spared the onslaughts of the Nazi war machine. Deliverance had come to the people of Great Britain. In the first half of Obadiah, we've already seen how God promised to send judgment on the Edomites and all the nations of the earth. Now, in the second half of the book, we're going to see how God reassured his people. He promised them that they would be rescued from exile, restored to their homeland, and brought back into God's kingdom. God had given them the promise of judgment. Now he was going to give them the promise of deliverance. Obadiah was a prophet who lived and served God's people around the time that Jerusalem fell to the Babylonians in 586 BC. Obadiah's message was for God's people, the Israelites. It concerned their national cousins, the Edomites, who betrayed them during the Babylonian invasion and cut them down in cold blood. The promise of God's deliverance first appears in verses 17 to 18. But on Mount Zion will be deliverance. It will be holy, and Jacob will possess his inheritance. Jacob will be a fire, and Joseph a flame. Esau will be stubble, and they will set him on fire and destroy him. There will be no survivors from Esau. The Lord has spoken. God's people had been invaded by the Babylonians. The city of Jerusalem had been taken. The temple, the sign of God's living with his people, lay in ruins. Only the weakest and the poorest people remained in the land. The rest, they'd either died or had been captured and taken into exile as prisoners of Babylon. It was into this situation that the Lord promised his people that they would receive deliverance. They would be rescued and restored. They would be made holy once more and they would return to live in God's promised land. But more than that, the deliverance of Jacob's descendants would be the very thing that brings about the downfall of Esau's descendants who had betrayed them. God's people would be a fire, a flame that would consume and utterly reduce the Edomites to nothing. The deliverance 
of God's people was guaranteed, but so was the downfall of their enemies. Rounding off his description of Israel's deliverance, Obadiah describes God's people retaking possession of the land of Israel in verses 19 to 20. From north to south, east to west, the descendants of Jacob retake both all that was rightfully theirs, but also all that belonged to the Edomites too. Much like other parts of the Old Testament, these verses might seem harsh, aggressive, unloving even. They feel a million miles away from the message of love, peace and compassion that Jesus gives us in the New Testament. So how should we understand these closing words of Obadiah? Imagine you have never seen an aeroplane before. Someone comes and describes to you what an airplane is. They describe what it looks like, what it does, how it has wings and can fly high into the air. Sometime later, you're shown a model of an airplane like this toy. And as you watch it glide through the air, you know that this is the object that was described to you. But then again, it isn't. It's like the thing that was described to you, but it isn't exactly what was described. For instance, it has wings, but it only flies a little way before coming back down to Earth. And then finally, you see one of these fly overhead. A huge aircraft with big wings and roaring engines. And at last, you realize that that is what was being described all along. Many words of prophecy in the Old Testament are a bit like this. God spoke to his people through prophets like Obadiah about what was going to happen in the future. But after these things come to pass, we discover that God actually had something bigger and better in mind. Sure enough, God's people did return to the land of Israel. And their return coincided with the beginning of the end for the Edomites, as various other nations turned on them, ultimately destroying them towards the end of the second century BC. But their deliverance from exile and the downfall of Edom, as significant as those things were, doesn't quite compare with the epic language of Obadiah. God says that his people would be a consuming fire to burn up Edom. Yes, the Edomites were defeated, but they weren't so much consumed as moved about a bit. Most Edomites were simply taken from their homeland and spread throughout the various empires that had defeated them. Likewise, the return of God's people into their homeland wasn't a glorious homecoming that they thought it would be, but rather a slow, weak and difficult process. The nation of Israel never really fully recovered its former glory. Instead, it was regularly occupied by other nations such as the Greeks, the Syrians and eventually the Romans. Much like the model aeroplane, Israel's return from exile and the downfall of Edom was like Obadiah's vision, but then again, it wasn't exactly like it. God seems to have something bigger and something better in mind. Then, as we move through history, another event comes into view. With the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, these words in Obadiah find a far greater and more significant meaning. In the same way that the description of an aeroplane only fully makes sense when you see the real life thing. So these words of Obadiah only fully make sense when you see them fulfilled in Christ. Obadiah was originally speaking to a people in physical captivity, but Jesus, well, he delivers from something far greater than that. Jesus brings spiritual deliverance from our bondage to sin. Jesus is the Holy One of Zion. He delivers us from sin through his death on the cross, and he delivers us into an eternal life 
through his resurrection from the dead. And that very deliverance is also the very means by which our true enemies are overthrown. You see, Jesus offers himself as payment for our sins. God's justice is satisfied. And as a result, Satan, sin and death, the greatest enemies of all humanity, are defeated. But it gets even better than that. Listen to how the book of Obadiah finishes. Deliverers will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau, and the kingdom will be the Lord's. You see, as we wait for Jesus' return, God's people are like a consuming fire to those around us who are still enemies of God because of their sin. But we do not overcome such people with physical violence or conquest. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of sin, evil and darkness. And so we love people and proclaim the good news of Jesus. We invite the enemies of God to become children of God through faith in his son. And we get to grow God's kingdom one lost sinner at a time. I wonder, where are you in this vision of Obadiah? Maybe you are one of God's people and you trust in Jesus and you have accepted him as Lord. Well, if that's you, then, then be encouraged. The Lord sees the injustice of the world, especially against his people, and he has already begun to act. He has sent his son to bring deliverance to all of God's people through his death on the cross. He is sending us out into the world to share the message of forgiveness and new life, even to our enemies, and so extend his deliverance to those still captive to sin. And he will return in glory at the end of human history to complete his deliverance once and for all and bring his people back home to enjoy life forever with him. So be encouraged, take heart and continue to faithfully serve him as someone who delivers the good news of Jesus to others. But maybe you have come to realise that you are, well, you're not one of God's people, but are actually an enemy of God just like the Edomites were. In the past, you may have opposed Christianity, perhaps even persecuted Christians, or you may have just simply resisted the call to turn to him in faith until now. But no matter how you have opposed God so far, maybe you are feeling the consuming fire of the good news of Jesus touching your heart, and you know that you need to act. If that is you, then you have two choices. You can continue to run away from God and distance yourself from his people. But know this, there is a day when that consuming fire of God's grace and mercy will become the consuming fire of his eternal judgment against those who have rejected him. Or you can allow yourself to be consumed by the fire of God's love for you in Christ and receive deliverance by faith in his death and resurrection for you. And if you make this choice, then you become a child of God. You receive forgiveness and new life, and you get to take your place in God's eternal kingdom and enjoy life with him forever. Obadiah is a book written to comfort those who are weak and broken. It is for those who have been hurt by sin and the struggle against a world opposed to God and his people. But it is also a book that speaks of far better things to come. It speaks of justice for God's people, judgment for God's enemies, and deliverance for all who will turn to the Lord and trust in him. For a while, we may seem weak, and the world may continue to oppose us, but from the Lord comes deliverance. Jesus has delivered us from sin. We now offer deliverance to lost people through the message of Christ. And eternal deliverance into God's kingdom will come when Jesus returns. On that day, at the end of human history, 
the final words of Obadiah will be completely and finally fulfilled. The kingdom will be the Lord's.